All right, these next two books are for Kevin and Aubrey Dobry. Now, I read these books when I was a young boy your age, maybe a little bit older, about Aubrey's age. Um, and you guys can share these books. You'll notice that on the back they have a one and two, and there are two more books that I will be sending you shortly. The first one is Encyclopedia Brown, The Boy Detective. That's the first book. The next one is Encyclopedia Brown and the Case of the Secret Pitch. Now, Encyclopedia Brown, he is called that because he's got a brain like an encyclopedia. In the very beginning, there's all these little cases. The case of the Natty Nat, the case of the scattered cards. And you gotta look through here, and then you gotta learn what the cases are. All right, so they have different little tricks. We got pictures in them, so you can see Encyclopedia Brown. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. I'm trying to decide if I want to read a chapter or if it's the whole book or not. I don't think I want to read it yet. In the case of Natty Nat. Mr. and Mrs. Brown had one child. They called him Leroy, and so did his teachers. Everyone else in Idaville called him Encyclopedia. An encyclopedia is a book or a set of books giving information arranged alphabetically on all branches of knowledge. There you go. It was filled with facts that he had learned from books. He was like a complete library walking around in sneakers. Old ladies who did crossword puzzles were always stopping him on the street to ask him questions. Just last Sunday after church, Mrs. Conway, the butcher's wife, had asked him, What is a three-letter word for a Swiss river beginning with A? R. Encyclopedia answered after a moment. He always waited a moment. He wanted to be helpful, but he was afraid that people might not like him if he answered their questions too quickly and sounded too smart. His father asked him more questions than anyone else. Mr. Brown was the chief of police of Idaville. The town had four banks, three movie theaters, and one little league. It had the usual number of gas stations, churches, schools, stores, and a comfortable houses on shady streets. It even had a mansion or two and some din dingy sections. And it had the average number of crimes for a community of its size. Idaville, however, only looked like the usual American town. It was really most unusual. For nearly a whole year, no criminal had escaped arrest, and no boy or girl had gotten away with, a, with breaking a single law in Idaville. That was partly because the town's policemen were brave and clever, but mostly it was because Chief Brown was Encyclopedia's father. <clears throat> His hardest cases were solved by Encyclopedia during dinner in the Browns' red brick house in Rover Avenue. Everyone in the state thought Idaville had the, about the smartest policeman in the world. Of course, nobody knew. A boy was the mastermind behind the town's police force. You wouldn't guess it by looking, like, at, looking at Encyclopedia. He looked like almost any other fifth grade boy and acted like one too, except that he never talked about himself. Mr. Brown never said a word about the advice his son gave him. Who would believe that his best detective was only 10 years old? This is how it began. One evening at dinner, Mr. Brown said, Natty Nat has struck again. He has held up another store, and this time right here in Idaville. What store, Dad? asked Encyclopedia. The men's shop, owned by Mr. Dillon and Mr. Jones, answered Mr. Brown. That makes six stores Natty Nat has held up in the state this month. Are you sure the robber was Natty Nat? asked Encyclopedia. Mr. Dillon himself said it was Natty Nat, replied Mr. Brown. He pulled a notebook from his pocket and put it beside his plate. I wrote everything down Mr. Dillon told me about the holdup. <clears throat> I'll read it to you. Encyclopedia closed his eyes. He always closed his eyes when he was getting ready to think hard. His father began to read what Mr. Dillon, the storekeeper, had told him about the holdup. I was alone in the store. I did not know anybody had come in. Suddenly, a man's voice told me to raise my hands. 
I looked up then. I was face to face with the man the newspapers call Natty Nat. He had on a gray coat with a belt in the back, just as the newspapers said. He told me to turn and face the wall. Since he had a gun, I did as he said. <clears throat> when I turned around again, he was gone with all the money. Chief Brown finished reading and closed his notebook. So here's something. Whenever you hear this, these are the clues. So think like Encyclopedia would think. <clears throat> Encyclopedia asked only one question. Did the newspapers ever print a picture of Natty Nat? No, answered his father. He never stands still long enough for a picture to be taken. Remember, he's never been caught. But every policeman in the state knows he always wears that gray coat with the belt in the back. Nobody even knows his real name, said Encyclopedia, half to himself. Natty Nat is just what the newspapers call him. Suddenly he opened his eyes. Say, the only mis reason Mr. Dillon thought it was Natty Nat was because of that gray coat, he said. The case is solved. <clears throat> there is nothing to solve, objected Chief Brown. There is no mystery. Mr. Dillon was robbed. The holdup happened. The holdup man was the same one who has been robbing other stores in the state. Not quite, said Encyclopedia. There was no holdup at the men's shop. What do you mean, exclaimed Mr. Brown. I mean, Mr. Dillon wasn't robbed, Dad. He lied from beginning to end, answered Encyclopedia. Why should Mr. Dillon lie, demanded his father. I guess he spent the money. He didn't want his partner, Mr. Jones, to know it was missing. So Mr. Dillon said he was robbed, said Encyclopedia. Leroy, said his mother, please explain what you are saying. It's simple, Mom, said Encyclopedia. Mr. Dillon read all about Natty Nat in the newspaper. Go on, said, Le said Mr. Brown. So he knew Natty Nat always wore a gray coat with a belt in the back when he held up the stores. Go on, Leroy, said Mr. Brown, leaning forward. Mr. Dillon knew it would sound much better if he could blame his holdup on some people he read about. He said he knew it was Mr. Natty Nat because of the coat he wore. That could be true, Chief Brown said. That couldn't be true, said Encyclopedia. Mr. Dillon never saw the back of the man who held him up. He said so himself. Remember? Chief Brown frowned. He picked up his notebook again. He read to himself what he had read. I was alone in the store. I did not know anyone had come in. Suddenly a man's voice told me to raise my hands. I looked up then. I was face to face with the man with the newspapers called Natty Nat. He had on a gray coat with a belt in the back, just as the newspapers said. He told me to turn and face the wall. Since he had a gun, I did as he said. When I turned around again, he was gone with all the money. How did he know he had a belt in the back? He read to himself for a while, then he fairly shouted, Leroy, I believe you are right. Encyclopedia said, Mr. Dillon only saw the front of the holdup man. He had no way of knowing that the man's coat had a belt in the back. He stole money from his own store and from his partner too, cried Chief Brown, and he nearly got away with it. He rushed from the dining room. Leroy, said Mrs. Brown, did you get this idea from a television program? No, said Encyclopedia. I got it from a book I read about a great detective and his methods of observation. Well, said his mother proudly, this proves how important it is to listen carefully and watch closely to train your memory. Perhaps you will be a detective when you grow up. Mom said Encyclopedia, can I have another piece of pie? Mrs. Brown sighed. She had taught English in the Idaville High School before her marriage. You may have another piece of pie, she said. That's chapter one. Next, we get into the case of the scattered cards, and you're gonna notice that Detective Encyclopedia Brown's gonna open up his own detective store. So that's book one. Book two, and then there's two more books in the series, and there's even more than that. So I'm gonna send these to you now. You'll get them, and you'll love them, and you'll read them, and it'll be the best ever. I love you, Kevin, I love you, Aubrey. I hope you guys can use your powers of observation to notice what's going on around you and try to think what could be happening. 
Also, I hope you read lots of encyclopedias because encyclopedias are amazing. I love you guys. Mwah. We'll see. Um, on this book for Aub uh, Kevin, Mwah. and on this book for Aubrey, Mwah. love you guys.